my guides, um, here's one I made earlier. It's a red kite and um, I've got up to the point where um, all the carving is done and the feet are done. And this, yeah, I'm now gonna, this is my favorite part is when I finish it off with uh, pyrography uh, to do the markings of the plumage. Um, I really enjoy doing this bit because it, it's the, it's the fastest part of, of the work really. Um, I, yeah, I can just bring the piece to life. I mean, it's a really pretty piece as it is right now, but um, yeah, marking the plumage with um, pyrography and a blowtorch, which we'll do um, in a minute, it, it just transforms the piece, it really does. And uh, I've been you know, trying to think of what, what style I call this. Um, uh, I mean, blow torches are used a lot with uh, chainsaw carving anyway. Some people um, will uh, paint their pieces as well. You know, it just depends on the style and, and what effect they want. Everybody's got their own unique style, which is cool. Um, for these pieces, I always like to burn the plumage on. I don't like to paint, I like to complement the wood. I, you know, I want people to see that it's made out of wood and to pick up you know, the beautiful grain as well. Um, I mean, there's just some fantastic uh, markings in, in the grain of this piece of oak. Um, there's lots of tiger stripe in it here and there. Um, some interesting knots and the cracks as well you know I love seeing that stuff in in the in the final piece um, and then when I'll, I'll coat it with oil afterwards that really highlights um, all, all those in, incredible details and again it is you know I enjoy blending the sculpture with with the wood so the animal is part of the wood and, and vice versa um, that's really important to me. So I always find a fine balance of how much detail of the animal that I actually put in so that I don't uh, hide the details of the wood, um, if you see what I mean. Uh, and, you know, the, the patterns in the wood grain very similar uh, to plumage anyway. Um, I mean, they really, really do complement each other. I just love that natural look. So, <clears throat> the um, feet as well, um, I'm going to zoom in on those, they've been made out of steel again, I've done some more welding, and they look a bit bright and, and grey and um, you know, it just doesn't work as they are, I mean it's cool but um, again I will heat them up and you get these incredible different colours. It just adds another dynamic to the whole piece. Um, so yeah, it looks good at the moment, but it, it, it will look amazing when it is completed. So I'm gonna zoom in on some of the features of... Just look at that, that, that wood grain. See the medullary rays um, coming through in the, the wood there. So, this plank probably came, I guess it is, is getting close to the middle to be able to get that stripe. And all of that stuff will show up, but you know, some will be to <laughs> where I'm burning in the, um, the plumage patterns into the, into the wing feathers. Um, Anyway, there you go. So these are what, what we're going to be using um, for doing the pyrography. Well, the majority of it, I'll probably end up using a pyrography pen for some of the smaller details, um, mainly around the eyes and, and the beak, um, possibly some striping on the, um, the breast as well, and um, head, possibly legs. I'll see what it looks like. Um, once I'm finished so the, the bigger part um, 
Yeah, of, of, of the pyrography, so probably the, the wing tips of the primary um, primary feathers, right, on, of those those biggish feathers on the end of the wings. I'll be using you know, the bigger blow lamp and probably use it for some of the shading as well. I'll put some shading in the wing pits. Um, and then for finer detail, I use the, uh, the little Dremel blow lamp, which is brilliant. You can almost use it like a mini airbrush. It's very, very cool, very versatile. Um, and it's easy to refill as well. Um, just this little chap there, and then you're away again. It, uh, you know, I should get sponsored really by Dremel. Um, this, uh, I'm not, I'm not trying to show I mean, there's lots of many torque blow lamps like this. You could use any. It, it comes with a soldering iron attachment. You can e even use it um, as a pyrography pen as well um, when you're out and about. Just got to be careful what wood you're using because uh, it's it burns hotter. There's not as much adjustment to it as there is on an electric uh, pyrography pen. Um, and there's uh, a another attachment that goes on the end of it, which is it kind of goes out. I'll I'll show it to you in another film. But uh, anyway, you, you you can be it, you can be very gentle with. Um, the heating and the burning it's it's very adjustable which is cool um anyway so that's what we're going to be using okay so i'm going to mark up some of the areas that are going to be really really dark um and to do that i always use um charcoal um which is uh brilliant i, I use it when i'm carving as well so I found, I just thought about it, uh, rather than using a Sharpie pen or uh, timber chalk or something like that. Sometimes timber chalk doesn't stick that well. Um, and it's a bit waxy uh, and it's not so easy to rub off if you want to rub it off. Charcoal is brilliant. It's easy to, to mark the wood with it. It doesn't matter whether it's wet or dry or, or what, or it's got oil on it. It will always go where you want it to go. It's cheap, readily available, and you can be quite detailed with it so you can mark in more shading. It's also easy to rub off as well. Great stuff. Um, if, you, if, you, if you carve, buy yourself a packet of charcoal, you know, for about four pounds uh, i've just got masses it's going to last me for ages I've, I've just got an assortment of different sizes absolutely brilliant um and it's it's really nice to work with uh so i'm going to be using this to to mark up some of the darker areas uh again it, it gives you an idea what it's going to look like anyway i mean it's burnt wood so um uh yeah so that's what i'm going to do i'm going to go and mark up that now okay so when you're marking up uh your birds ready to burn. It is useful to, you know, if you can't remember exactly where the markings or you want a, a guideline, then do look up the species of bird that you're, um, you know, you're working on online and, and just, you know, just Google search, you know, spread winged, whatever bird of prey that you're, you're looking at just to give you a rough idea of the reference for where the markings are actually going. And that's what I, I'm doing at the moment. Every now and again, you'll probably see me pause and I'm just having another double check on where yeah, the markings are. They don't have to be exact. Uh, every bird is different anyway, you know, like a, a fingerprint. Um, but it, it does help you to, to, uh, to have that as a, a guideline while, whilst you're marking up. Um, and then you don't have to think about it so much when you're you're doing the burning. Okay, so being a bit of a short ass, I um, had to put the uh, the bird on a table so I could just <laughs> also see you could see what I was drawing, I guess as well. Even though you can't really see much of what I'm doing all the time. Um, so some some of the the wing tips and some of the feathers are darker on one half of the quill than the other. So I kind of marked that in as well. Um, and later on, once this is all burnt, I will, um, yeah, when I finish off the pyrography, I'm, I'll mark in the quills with a, um, a curved, little curved gouge. Um, I could just scrape that mark in out of the, the burnt wood and it just highlights, it gives it another added piece of detail. 
Um, yeah. Okay, so I've um, marked, uh, rough marked, some of the darker areas of shading out. So I'm going to start using the, the big blow lamp um, <coughs> to do the wingtips and then some of the shading around the legs and the wing pit as well. Um, and then we move on to the Dremel and my strange um, masking tool that I use, which is basically made out of um, two old flat chainsaw files uh, welded onto a piece of threaded rod. Very sophisticated piece of equipment. Okay, so we start off with the big blow torch. So I'll be work burning the wing tips on the primary feathers. Um, yeah, that's quite a common mark in most birds of prey if you have these, these black tips. And I think they look absolutely striking when, when you burn them in. I know you lose some of the, the lovely grain I was raving on about earlier on, but um, yeah, again, as I said, it's getting that fine balance of um, features of the bird itself and maintaining the, the beauty of the wood as well. But uh, these black wingtips really highlight the bird when, it, when it's mounted on a wall. It looks absolutely striking because uh, it makes the whole bird stand out so much more as well. Uh, it really adds to the effect. Um, so if you can pick a bird that has, or even if it's only got a little bit of, if you mark it with a tiny bit of black on the wingtip, it just highlights it, gives it a bit more of an outline. Make it stand out, gives it more presence on the wall, um, and that's what it's all about, really. Um, you know that I've learned a lot that um, it's not always about the precision of craftsmanship or making it completely like the animal. It's picking your piece, um, and you're finding ways of making it stand out more as well. So. With this bird, what I've done, I haven't really done it uh, before, I've managed, because of the thickness of the board, I've managed to curve the wingtips kind of back, which, which they do, um, on eagles and kites, which are, you know, they're both very similar. A kite is pretty much just a slender eagle, and that's why they have you know, very similar primary wingtips, that, that flare outwards, um, just a little bit. Um, and that just adds a bit more movement and character to, uh, to your piece. Um, yeah. So I'll also be using the blow torch for adding some shading here and there as well underneath the wing, particularly in the, the wing pit, um, uh, just to highlight the view of the, the car areas that are carved in, in the feathers around the, the body as well. It just picks it up a bit more. Um, some of the grain and, and just make some you know, some of that carving stand out. Um, and before I, I go on to using the, uh, the, um, the small blow torch for finer details. And then once, um, you know, I, I also take quite a chunk out the back as well. Just um, So if you're looking at it side on, it, it just makes it look a bit more realistic. I mean, you don't see the whole of the back by any stretch. Um, I'll probably make a piece that you you know you could hang from a raft or something, or yeah, maybe something where you're looking down on it. I might make a whole 3D version or something similar. But um, when <coughs> once I've, I've cut them thin enough, these wings, I then tidy them up. I actually tidy them up with a uh, uh, a jigsaw. Uh, just a normal standard electric jigsaw, and you can get a much, you can get in there much finer with it as well um, than you would with a chainsaw, um, or try and tidy it up with a, a sanding disc, uh, or you know, a grinding disc, or whatever. It, it, it just you get in there much finer, and and then I'll tidy things up with chisels and gouges. Um, I really didn't have the time to film the process of, of you know, what the tools I'm using on this bird, but. I certainly use um, gouges and chisels way more than what I used to, um, and I find when I'm working down into finer detail, I, I use them more and more, and then I, I might tidy 
up the rough areas with a, a sanding disc afterwards. Um, I, I just like the control and the precision and the peace and quiet as well. Um, so yeah, definitely get your um, and the chisels out. Yeah, yeah, and gouges. Okay, so now I'm going to start doing some finer detail with the Dremel, small Dremel blowtorch. And I'm not going to speed it up to start off with, just to give you an idea how slow you know you, you, you have to be. Um, you know, just to give you an idea how long it actually takes to use the, um, the mini blow lamp. Um, and then I'll speed it up because you know then you can just see it progress um, quite rapidly. But along this part of the wing, to there 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 is um, this section of feathers are quite dark, so I'm spending a bit more time burning uh, those in, and then just highlighting some of the edges of of the feathers that I feather shapes that I've carved into the wood. Um, yeah. I'll speed up the film now. So I've slowed the film down again. I just want to show you this process of using the masking tool. Um, it, it's got, you notice it's got a kind of a little funny V shape. Um, it means I can turn it around and have, have you know, a lot of these barbs have like a point in them, but um, here I'm just kind of using it as a, a rough um, way of burning in a stripe. Um, to burn the, the, the barb uh, effect that you have in, in the tail of um, red kite. Um, in fact, many birds of prey again have this, this similar barbed um, plumage. Uh, the weird thing is uh, red kite's plumage looks quite similar um, to a kestrel in a weird way. It's like a uh, a bigger version. Um, I mean, the male kestrel has a grey head, like um, red kite has a grey head, and they're both have you know quite reddish coloured plumage. And then on the underside, they have this lovely um, uh, barbed um, effect. But I just thought I'd show you um, how that works, and I'll speed up again. Okay, so I've slowed the uh, film right down again. Um, I just want to show you this bit. Uh, half of the feathers on one side of the quill on these primary feathers, um, some of them are quite dark. So there's like a light side and a dark side. So I want to get that detailing because I thought it looked quite cool. Um, so I'm just running my strange masking tool um, just holding it up against the, the wood and I can burn in between one edge of the feather and the, um, and the piece of metal and it works really, really well and it just adds a little bit more 
detail. It's just another finer touch. <laughs> Okay, so uh, that's most topography work done. Um, this is a bit more work I'm going to do with um, topography pen. Some finer details here and there. Maybe some more of the uh, the markings on the breast and the head. I'll touch up with, with that. And um, the next thing to do is topography on the legs. Okay, so I've set up the legs um, on this block of wood. A uh, scrap piece of oak, which is very uh, useful for this sort of thing. Um, so I'm going to heat these up now. I think I'm going to use the small Dremel blow lamp um, to start off with. I want these claws to be darker than the rest. So they will turn into a blue and purple colour, which would be amazing. And then uh, the rest of it, I'm going to try and get it to a bronzish colour. Which will, it'll just look, um, it'll just blend in better with the, the end piece. Right. <laughs> So we've finished uh, all the pyrography work now. I've um, <coughs> coated the bird with two coats of um, Danish oil and I've also finished off the pyrography work with the, the pyrography pen uh, on the beak and um, eyes. You can see it's darkened off there. And I've also gouged out um, the lines of the quill on the primary and secondary feathers just to give it a little bit more um, uh, detail. Um, I saved that for the end because I wanted to gouge out any burning marks um, on the feathers and just make everything stand out that bit more. Um, yeah, sometimes it's knowing how to do things in the right order I guess. Um, I've also coated the feet in a lacquer so th this could go outside, it's oak anyway, there's not, I don't think there's any sapwood on it. Um, so yeah, it's a good quality piece of oak. And um, as long as it's treated with a layer of some sort of oil every year, it'll last fine. Um, this piece went off to um, a charity, the Irish Gas Benevolent Fund, and it was auctioned off and it made um, some good money. Um, for the charity which is really really good and, and uh, I'll be doing more of that in the future um, anyway I hope you enjoyed watching this whether it's for your own entertainment or to learn something if it was to learn something I, I hope you, you've learned something um, and it'll help you along with your, your carving um, anyway please like and subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed watching and thanks very much and I'll see you on the next video thanks Oh,